Good morning. Um, so I'm going to do something a little bit different this time. Uh, it's just going to be me and I'm just going to extemporaneously walk my way through a demonstration that I want to show you about vertical mass spring system and simple harmonic motion, position, velocity, and accelerations as a function of time, actually collecting that data. Uh, I don't have a script, but I do have some bullet points that I want to get through. Uh, let's actually start right here because this is where we have to start. Right, you have to start there, there's no choice. Okay, so basic idea over here, we have a mass spring system, which I'm going to set into simple harmonic motion in a moment. Uh, you can see I have a camera specifically for that. And then the screen capture, you can also see on the screen. So let's set the simple harmonic motion, or set the mass spring system into simple harmonic motion. So here we are. Uh, we have 305 grams attached to this spring, and below there we have a motion sensor to collect the position as a function of time of this mass spring system. Uh, below the mass, I've actually added a playing card. Believe it or not, the reason for that is uh, I found that the, the motion sensor senses the position of the mass much easier if I have that on there, because it's just a little bit larger, I think. So, uh, there we go. We have the vertical mass spring system moving in simple harmonic motion. Great. Uh, let's just review the equations real quick. Position as a function of time equals the amplitude times the cosine of the quantity angular frequency times time plus phi, the phase constant. Um, again, it could be cosine, it could be sine. It just depends on the initial condition really. Uh, we derive the equation for velocity. Velocity equals negative amplitude times sine of the quantity angular frequency times time plus phi. And then acceleration equals the negative amplitude times the angular frequency squared times the cosine of the quantity angular frequency times time plus phi, the phase constant. Those are the equations that we've already derived. Now, uh, let's collect the data for position as a function of time. So in Capstone, the program on the computer from Pasco, you can see on the y-axis we have position and on the x-axis we have time. And I'm going to click record to collect data as a function of time. Position as a function of time. Okay, so there we have position as a function of time. That's awesome. Okay, so you can see, let's actually adjust the x-axis here, the x-axis scale. So now we have something that looks like that. Now, this is our cosine wave. And this is because it started initially at time t equals zero at the amplitude. If instead, it had started right here, we could have used the sine wave. This would have it starting at rest position and moving upward. We could have just used the sine wave and the phase shift would be equal to zero, but we have it actually starting right there. And this has a phase shift of zero and it is the cosine wave. That is the position as a function of time. Great. So Let's also get on here, let's add another graph. Let's get a graph we're gonna put below this and let's put the velocity as a function of time on this graph. Again, I wanna adjust the x-axis scale here so that it matches. And you can see right there we have two cycles. I guess that's important to realize. We have two cycles here in our graph. So the velocity you can see is a negative sine wave. You can see it doesn't quite um, approximate a sign as well as the position did. I'll talk about why that is in just a moment. And we can also add then, we can change this to acceleration as a function of time. So now adjust the x-axis scale to get so it is the same. So here you can see this is a negative cosine wave or at least it approximates a negative cosine wave. You can see it starts negative down here and then goes up and comes back down. It is a negative cosine wave, but you can see there's a lot more error in the acceleration than there was in the position. There was a little bit more in velocity. And the reason for that is all the motion sensor collects is position. That's the only data it's able to collect. So it, this program calculates the velocity from the position. Remember, velocity equals change in position over change in time. Position final minus position initial divided by change in time. In other words, every velocity has two positions in it. Every velocity data point has the error of two uh, position data points. So it has twice the error. And acceleration equals change in velocity over change in time. So velocity final minus velocity initial divided by change in time. So every acceleration has two velocities and hence 
four positions in it. So acceleration actually has four times the error as position. And you can actually see that error in the acceleration graph right here. Great. All right, let's actually get rid of this acceleration graph and just return to position as a function of time. There we have position as a function of time. Okay, so we can now determine the period of this motion. We can select, doo -doo, click here. Why is it not clicking? There we go. We can collect, select a certain range of data um, right here. So from there to there is two full cycles. Great. Now we can bring up the data table and we can put position and time on our data table. And let's adjust the position. Yeah, there we go. And adjust the location here because we don't need that. Okay, so now you can see it actually selects the data from the graph also in the data table. So you can see it's highlighted there. So you can see it starts at time zero and ends at time, where is it? Uh, time 2.720. So you can see that the change in time for two full cycles is 2.72 seconds. And so if we take and divide that by two, we get 1.36, which is the time for one full cycle because I selected two cycles in this graph. One other thing I want to talk about about this data uh, right here that I have highlighted is notice the initial position that was the maximum was 0 0.401 meters and the final after two cycles, the final maximum position is 0 0.400 meters. So even after only two cycles, it has actually been damped by one millimeter. You could see clearly it's damped simple harmonic motion right here because it's barely in simple harmonic motion now, but even after two full cycles, it's already damped by one millimeter. Now, we have the period, which means we can use the period of a mass spring system equation to, to determine the spring constant of the spring. So that's period equals two pi times the square root of mass divided by the spring constant. Solving for the spring constant, so square the whole equation, we get period squared equals four pi squared times the mass divided by the spring constant. Multiply both sides by the spring constant, divide by the period squared, we get spring constant equals four pi squared times the mass divided by the period squared. So four times pi squared, times the mass. Now it's 305 grams, which is 0 0.305 kilograms divided by the period 1.36 squared. And the spring constant of this spring is roughly 6.51 newtons per meter. Cool. Oh, <laughs> sorry. One, one other cool thing, uh, which I really think is fun. Okay. So back to here, back to the data, I'm going to now add a best fit sine wave. So the data has now, it's added this best fit line. You can see it right there, this best fit curve, and it's a sine wave. And it's of the form amplitude times the sine of angular frequency times time plus phi, the phase constant, plus c. And that constant c just raises it above the uh, time axis because all of the positions are above zero. So you can see the angular frequency is in there. It's 4.66. And remember, angular velocity equals change in theta over change in time. If the change in theta is one revolution or two pi radians, the change in time is the period, which is capital T. So we know period equals two pi divided by the angular frequency. So we can take two times pi and divided by the angular frequency of this best fit curve of 4.66. And we will also get the period. And the period is roughly 1.35 seconds, which is really very close to what we calculated um, using two cycles, 1.36 seconds, which I think <laughs> is pretty awesome. All right. Uh, so that's all I have for this. So I, I hope you enjoyed because this was great. So thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.